So this right here is the Xbox 360 version of Sonic the Hedgehog 3 running on the Xbox One. Now it looks like 360, but the 360 is not only turned off, but when I hit the middle button it takes me to the Xbox One dashboard. So this is indeed the backwards compatibility mode of the Xbox One and not some Xbox 360. No idea why it took a while to sign in, but let's show you the let me show you the major problem with this. Let's start game, cloud save games. Now, as you can see, it looks like Sonic 3. I mean, yay! You're finally able to play Sonic 3 on your Xbox One. But at the same time, it's got a major problem, and that problem will show itself the second this intro is done, which I can't skip because it's Sonic 3. So right now, I'm at the main menu. See that? That's input lag. See this input lag? When I push a button, there's a delay between when I push it and when something actually happens. Notice this. This is a problem with the Xbox One backwards compatibility mode. And now, I chose Sonic 3 because it's a good game that can demonstrate this problem. Now, I'm going to hook up my Xbox 360 and play the same exact game on there. So here I am playing Sonic 3 on the Xbox 360, not the newer Xbox One. And as you can see, there's little to no input lag when playing on the last gen console. When I do the real quick A tapping, I notice it happens a lot faster. And when I do something like this, where I jerk the analog stick quickly the other way, seems to respond a lot faster. Now this seems to be a problem with the Xbox One's backwards compatible emulator. This does not happen on the real Xbox 360. It seems like input lag can be a serious issue. And it makes me wonder how much Microsoft actually tested the emulator in the real world, because it seems like the Xbox 360 emulator still has a ways to go when it comes to achieving performance like on the original console. See? A lot more playable on the last gen system compared to this where it's a lot less playable than it is on the original hardware. Terrible, terrible emulation right here. I mean, it's unplayable because of the controls. That's a big no-no when it comes to gaming. The controls cannot be laggy or else it's a poor emulation. So let's try one more Xbox 360 game that works on the Xbox One Mass Effect. Now, Mass Effect is a pretty old game, and it wasn't very well optimized on the Xbox 360. I mean, I'm just loading my safe on. You can see the pop-in. I mean, it's a 2007 game after all, but... As you can tell, aiming's nearly instantaneous. Not an emulator whatsoever, so no need to worry about any sort of additional lag. Same goes with movement. Movement is the same as it was in Mass Effect back in the day, back in 2007. So, let's try the same game on the Xbox One. With the Xbox 360 emulator. With the disc, of course. Now, this is Mass Effect 1. 
running on the Xbox One instead of the old 360. Now, the load times seem quicker because of the hard disk installation, but there seems to be an input lag when it comes to turning my character. And this isn't even in combat, this is just the camera. There seems to be a noticeable input lag compared to the Xbox 360 version. Same with moving around. When I tap the analog stick, it's like there's a second of delay. Now this is unacceptable for gamers, and this is the Xbox One's backwards compatibility feature, the feature that Microsoft's been hyping up for months, and it is broken because of the input lag, and Microsoft is going to need to fix this if they want the Xbox One's backwards compatibility to be taken seriously, because as it stands, this is unfit for a gaming console with this much input lag. That's all that needs to be said. Xbox One backwards compatibility is a joke because of this input lag. And Microsoft really needs to fix this. That's all that needs to be said, and I hope that if Xbox support or whatever's watching this video, I hope they make a fix for this, because that's all that needs to be said. Thanks for watching, subscribe for more.